Well, this morning, we are beginning a series. I, I met with, uh, as we always meet uh, each week, uh, with Johnny and with Dave, and talked about the fact that uh, given this season that we find ourselves in, is it really a time to, to take on a series and start something that will be ongoing? Uh, you probably have realized this to this point, but every week I've, I've tried to stay current and relevant with things that were going on, and so the thought of doing a series that we planned out for uh, a few weeks in advance didn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. And so as we began to think about where we are and what is coming, I really felt uh, led to, to begin a series that I believe is relevant uh, to what we are experiencing right now. Uh, the series title is While We Wait. Do you feel like we're waiting? Some of you say yes, some of you say no. In some ways, I believe that we are, at least for me, I, I'm waiting for some normalcy. I'm waiting for a time when we can gather together fully, uh, together in one place, not some digitally, some uh, here. I'm not saying that I'm waiting for things to go back to the way they were because I think we've learned some things and that'll be coming in the, in the future, some things that I want to talk about that we are learning through this. But some normalcy. I've talked about this before, but I, I think most of you are like me. Some of you may are more patient than I am, but, but I'm not a, a patient person when it comes to waiting. I don't like to wait. Uh, if I go, uh, just to be very uh, transparent with you, yesterday and, and current, yes, yesterday, Christy and I were working on a project in our yard, and, and we needed mulch. And when I went to one of our local, I won't say who, but one of our local retailers, and the lines were wrapped around the registers, I thought, it's not worth this. I'm not going to wait in this line for mulch. I'm not a good patient person when it comes to waiting. And I've told you this before too, and I, and I still stand by this. If you see me in a store and I'm in line at a cash register, go to a different line because I am the worst at picking the wrong one. I don't like to wait. And in our culture, I think that we've gotten to the point that even microwaves are too slow. We don't, we don't like to wait. But as I said, as we began this morning, I believe part of the frustration with this season, part of the frustration of the wait, is that it reminds us, and we come face to face with the fact that we aren't in control. When things are going well, when our lives are moving along as we think they should, we take on this false sense of security that somehow we're in charge. We're the, the commander of our own destiny, that we control what happens in our lives. And then when we are faced with something like what we are experiencing right now, we realize we are not. And it's frustrating because we are sinful and selfish by nature. But what we realize in the midst of something like this is that we aren't in control, but as believers, we know who is. And we can take hope in that. And so, as we move forward over the next few weeks, I want us to think about this idea of waiting. While we wait. And so today, the title of the message is Humble Stillness. That's one of the things that we need to learn in this time of waiting, our text that will drive this series is Isaiah 40, verse 31. The NIV translates it this way, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Another way to translate that word hope is wait. 
In the Old Testament, there are a couple of words for uh, the word that is translated typically wait. But the concept is always tied together. It's a sense of, of uh, passiveness that we simply just sit back and what we would think of as wait. But there's also a sense of active expectation that we're sitting on the edge of our seat waiting. We're waiting for something to happen. We know something's coming. Something good is going to happen. We're waiting. And so in the Old Testament, that's how we see this word used, is it is a passive sense that we're waiting. We can't change things, but we're waiting with expectation. There's a tension between doing nothing and hoping, living expectantly. And so I want us to have that concept as we think about waiting. As we think about over the next few weeks, I, if it were up to me, this would be over and we would all be full back in this room again. But that's not going to happen right away. And so we need to understand that there's this expectant waiting. Can't do a whole lot about it, but we know that something better is coming. So I want to challenge us during this time to wait intentionally. So I want to ask you a couple of questions. How are you making the most of our waiting? A more pointed question. Are we actually waiting or are we doing all we can to stay distracted? Because you see, that's what happens. When we don't want to wait, when we don't like sitting still, we find something else to do. We get distracted. We, we take our focus and we place it on something that will entertain us. Some of us are binge watching shows on Netflix. Some of us are doing a lot of yard work. Wow, I'm ready for this thing to be over. We find things to distract us. We don't like being still and, and waiting. But I want to challenge us to take time to rest in the Lord, to, to reflect on all His goodness, all His mercy, all His grace. Richard Foster, uh, a very uh, strong thinker, particularly when it comes to spiritual lives, he says this, the desperate need today is not for a greater number of intelligent people or gifted people, but for deep people. Are we thinking through what God is doing in our midst? Are we reflecting on Him? Are we taking this time of being still, of resting, of waiting, and pointing our attention to Him? This series will give us some ideas on, on how to wait, but this morning I want us to think about why. Why we wait. Our text this morning is Lamentations 3, and the verse that we'll look at is 24, but I want to back up and read a little more to give us some context. Beginning in verse 19 of Lamentations chapter 3, and let me just remind you, Lamentations to lament the author is going through some things that he's not happy about, that he's having to work through. And so we find here in verse 19, I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Does that sound like something that we're experiencing right now to some extent in, a, in, a wor in our world? Maybe not us personally, but do we think about the fact, this affliction, the bitterness, the gall? But then he says this in verse 21, Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And so he comes to this conclusion, verse 24, I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. Do you hear the hope 
in that statement. The Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. Do you hear? You won't like this as much. Do you hear the humility? The Lord is my portion. I don't need anything else. All that I need is right there. The Lord is my portion. God is all we need. You remember the series that we went through a few, few months ago on the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I don't need anything else. The reality is God is all that we need. And so, therefore, we wait on Him. God is with us always, and His very presence gives us all that we need. We lack nothing. We may think we lack some things, but the reality is we lack nothing. Because the Lord is our shepherd. But as I said, you also hear within this some humility. I believe that waiting on the Lord, realizing that He is our portion, means that He is all we need. He is first. We don't like that sometimes, do we? We like to be in charge. We like, that's, as we said a moment ago, that's part of, I think, why we struggle with what we're going through is we realize, we come face to face with the fact that we aren't in charge. But the waiting reminds us that we need to humble ourselves. We need to realize that God is first, that I am second, and what He has for me is all that I need. Andrew Murray, a theologian in the 19th century, wrote a work specifically around humility, and he defined humility this way. Humility means the giving up of self and taking of the place of perfect nothingness before God. And then he goes on a few lines later and says, this is your one duty. Taking on the understanding that we are nothing before God. God is all. All we need. He is our portion. Augustine, writing in the 300s, in his work, The Confessions, he made a very perceptive comment. He said that, speaking to God, you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Blaise Pascal was a, a scientist, a theologian, a thinker uh, about 1,300 years later. And he said this, What else does this craving and this helplessness proclaim but that there was once in man a true happiness of which all that now remains is the empty print and trace? This he tries in vain to fill with everything around him, seeking in things that are not there, the help he cannot find in those that are, though none can help. Since this infinite abyss can be filled only with an infinite and immutable object, in other words, by God himself. You've probably heard the phrase, uh, a God-shaped hole in our lives, a God-sized hole in our lives. That comes from this quote from Blaise Pascal. But the idea is that God created us for relationship with Him. Our hearts, as Augustine said, are restless within us except that when we are with Him. So during this time of waiting, we need to humble ourselves, realize that God is in control, God is number one, what He has for us, whatever that may be, is enough. We take this time to wait. Wait on the Lord to truly realize that all we need is Him and we draw close to Him. When all is stripped away, we realize all we need is God. So I encourage each of us as we wait to truly humble ourselves 
And as we do, to take some time, rather than filling that restlessness within us with all the distractions that we can find, to be still. To be still. Psalm 46.10, one of my favorite verses. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know that I am God. At the heart of being still is a profound sense of humility. When we are still, when we relinquish that control to God, we trust that He is in control, and we need to cease striving, cease striving to control things, to control Him. Cease to the frenzy of, of having to produce to show our worth. That's a difficult one for me. As a type A personality that likes to check things off my list, that adds things to my list that I've already done just so that I can check them, check them off, that's difficult for me. There is within me a sense that I must produce. I must be active. I must be doing something. When we still ourselves, our minds, our hearts, our actions, and we focus intently on Him, what we are doing is relinquishing control and saying, God, I can't change this. I leave this to you. And so the reason we need to wait, the reason we need to focus our attention on Him is that we need to humble ourselves and just be still and trust Him. Martin Laird is a, a current thinker, contemplative author, he says this, I found the words uh, meaningful to me. Let us journey home then to the silence of our own fathoms by becoming still. When I hear those words, I, I'm reminded of the fact that that's what God created us to do, to rest in Him. Yes, there are things that He created us to accomplish, all for Him to live in accordance with His way, to show others the power and the love and the joy that comes in living for Him. But it begins with resting in Him, trusting Him fully. So I want to encourage us, as we think about what we are going through right now, as we think about the fact that we are waiting, be reminded that it is in the mundane of the everyday that we encounter God. It doesn't have to be some mountaintop experience. It can be in the mundane of the everyday. And so as we wait, as we still ourselves, may we find Him. May we encounter Him by focusing our attention on Him. Waiting begins with being still. So my challenge for us this morning is take time to wait for God with hope and expectation, accepting that He comes first and He is all you really need. Let's pray together. Father, I thank You that Your Word reminds us of what we need. Uh, we think that we need so much more. We, we have... Uh, become people who are accustomed to defining our wants by need. Remind us today that, that you know what we need better than we know ourselves. May we find comfort in the fact that you are in control, that we don't have to try to figure all of this out. Our role, our one duty is to humble ourselves and to put you first. So as we wait, as we go through this season together, may we be reminded that you are close, you are here, you are in control. And the greatest thing we can do right now is to be still in your presence. and reflect our attention on you. Help us to do that this week. May we be changed 
because of our time spent with you. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen.